My name is Lauren, and I'm an engineer on the Firebase team. I joined Google just about a year ago. In fact, next Tuesday is actually my Google anniversary, uh, so I'm really excited about that. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, so during the last year, I've been working on the cloud functions for Firebase team, and we launched in beta in March something called Cloud Functions for Firebase. This is a product that allows you to run custom server code on Google servers in response to events happening in your app. So you might have already attended some of the talks this week on Cloud Functions for Firebase. As many powerful applications, we are sharing with you one of them today, which is how to easily add machine learning to your app. So before we dive in, you must be thinking, why would I care about machine learning? I'm not trying to build the next self-driving car. Maybe you are, and if you are, get on you. But if you're not, it's still useful to you. It's not just something that requires this huge team of data scientists and engineers. It is something that, thanks to Google's technologies, you can implement with one or two engineers, and you can use it to enhance the user experience of your app, something that is important no matter what you are building. So what do I mean by that? One example is adding multi-language support. So you have big ambitions for your app. You don't just want to limit your users to those that speak English. With machine learning, it can be automatically translating content, especially user-generated content, so that people that otherwise do not have a common language can be connected through your app. Great example of this is closed captioning for YouTube. So this is a feature that you can turn on where machine learning has automatically not only transcribed the audio of the video, but also translated it. So here we have a video intro introducing cloud functions for Firebase. We only made it in English, but a developer in China can simply turn on closed captioning in Chinese and follow along. Another great example of how machine learning enhances the user experience is providing contextual data so that your app can respond intelligently when the user does something. My favorite example of this is in Google Photos. So if you've used it before, you might know that when you upload a photo, machine learning automatically picks out exactly what's in each photograph and annotates them. This way, later, when you're looking for something, you can find it really quickly. So recently, I was trying to go back to a hike that I did that I really enjoyed. I knew it was by the ocean. I knew it was in Marin County. I had no idea what the name of it was. But I knew that I had taken a photo of the sign. So I searched up ocean inside Google Photos. It quickly pulled up all of these photos of oceans I took in the last few months. I saw the ones that matched the view I remembered, looked at that date, pulled up the rest of that photos from that day, and it turned out to be the Rocky Point Road Trail in Mill Valley. So I was able to go back to that hike, and that was a really magical experience. Again, machine learning here was behind the scenes. It automatically detected what was in my photo when I uploaded. I didn't have to manually tag it to try to remember it later. So that was a really great experience for me. So another example of using machine learning comes from our partner, Augur Labs. They're a Firebase customer, one of the early users of Cloud Functions for Firebase. They make mobile apps for art communities and galleries that enhance the art viewing experience. So they use machine learning in two ways. One, they perform image recognition. When someone snaps a photo of an artwork, it knows exactly which piece it is and pulls up the relevant information about the artist, about the work. Secondly, they use machine learning whenever someone uploads photos of artwork to then annotate them so they're easily searchable later. So this is a great example of a company that is making an app where they're using machine learning to make the experience of something even more fun, in this case, walking through an art gallery. So enough talking about machine learning. You must be really anxious to see it in action. So today, uh, I'm going to show you a few things. So we thought, you know, we could just do a demo where we show you a bunch of machine learning apps and, and you know, show you how they work. But it would be even more fun to make a game out of it and use cloud functions to tie together a few APIs. One of the APIs we really want to show you is called the Cloud Video Intelligence API. Uh, this is something that Google launched in March in beta. And for the first time, you can use machine learning in a very easy to use API format to, to analyze video content. So you might have done speech or vision before uh, for photos, but video content was 
prior to this really difficult because of the massive amounts of data in each file. But now you can easily feed it a video and it'll pull out exactly what's there. So what we did prior to this talk is we found a few videos, cranked it through this API, looked at the labels, and the game we're going to play today is where you as players have to guess what the video intelligence API guessed based on what you see. So I will demo one round of the game right now. Then I'll invite up Brendan to explain the magic sauce behind the game. Then RJ will walk us through the code. And last but not least, you will all get a chance to play. So if we can switch over to the demo screen, please. So here we've got one video that we've cranked through the API. I'm going to play it in a sec. And here I've got on my phone, which you can see on the screen being live streamed. And I'm going to guess what's in the video. So I'm going to play it right now. And the way I interact with this app is by speaking to it. So this red microphone button I'm going to press, speak when I hold it down, and release when I'm done talking. Sand. So what happened ne what's happening now is that the audio is being captured in a file. It gets uploaded to cloud storage for Firebase. That kicks off a cloud function which then analyzes it for correctness. And here, I got it correct. So that was sand. So some browsers may not support microphone access. In that case, you can press this keyboard button at the top left and type in an answer instead. So I see a lot of sun here. Maybe sun is something else. Oh, it turns out it was not sun. Uh, you can see here on my app, you've got a score. So my score of one correct guess, the audience score uh, of two because we, of course, have a demo bug and it duplicated my answers. And another thing that we see on the big screen is you see the audience score just like we did before, but also the number of languages. So here I've only spoken in English, is only one um, for that. Gonna, I grew up in China. I lived there until I was 10. So I'm going to speak in Mandarin here. So I select Mandarin from this list, click Submit, go back to Microphone. So I'm going to say the Mandarin word for ocean, hai yang. So here is not only transcribing what I'm saying, but also translating it and then evaluating it for correctness. Uh, oh, I see what's going on. A lot of you are playing the game. <laughs> OK, not demo fail, user error. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but thank you for participating. Don't worry, you will all get a chance to play later. Uh, so I want to draw your attention to a few things. So here, we've got an activity stream of everything that's happening. So the blue is correct guesses, the red is uh, failed guesses. And at the end of each round, I'm going to pull up the summary. And you can see this is the answer key. So this is what the Video Intelligence API has pulled out. Uh, and a few of them we've guessed, a few of them we haven't. So if you can switch back to the slide, please. We are going to have Brendan walk us through what's happening. Right. Thanks, Lauren. All right, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Brendan Lim. I'm the product manager on Cloud Functions for Firebase. So you're probably wondering how we built the app that Lauren just demoed. So the magic behind the scenes involves using a variety of cloud machine Google's machine learning APIs on top of Cloud Functions for Firebase. So we'll quickly go through some of the different machine learning APIs and see how we can use them in our own app to improve the app experience. So first off, the Cloud Video Intelligence API is one of Cloud's newest machine learning APIs. You can take any video and run it through this API to detect different objects, labels, and even scene changes. For our app, we use it to detect objects in the video. These objects will be the answers that you'll be trying to guess when we all play together. So we also use the Cloud Speech API to convert audio to text. So when Lauren spoke into the microphone, we ran that audio through the Cloud Speech API so we could extract that text. The Cloud Speech API also recognizes over 80 different languages and can even stream text results in real time. So our app lets you submit answers in many different languages. For this, we use the Cloud Translation API. This lets you pass in any arbitrary string and translate it to over 100 different languages. So each possible answer in our app has been run through this API to build out our answer bank. 
So although we're not using this in our app, it's important to mention another machine learning API, one of the most popular ones. Uh, so this is the Cloud Vision API. It allows you to analyze images to detect individual objects, faces, extract text, even to figure out if there are certain landmarks in your photo. So this is an actual photo of my dog. And it did a wonderful job of detecting what type of dog she is, and even notice that there's a stuffed toy in the photo. So for most use cases, these APIs are best implemented off the client and on your back end. This lets you have a centralized place to have all of your logic for processing input from multiple users, allow you to keep long-running processes and tasks off the client. You can keep things like secrets as well as secure logic away from prying eyes. But what if you don't want to deal with setting up and managing your own custom servers? Well, we have a thing for that. As you may have guessed, Cloud Functions for Firebase. So Cloud Functions is a programmatic glue. It allows you to write custom JavaScript code deployed to Google's Cloud, which can be triggered by Firebase and Cloud events. Also, there's no need to think about servers here. Cloud Functions for Firebase lets you run your mobile backend code without having to worry about setting up or managing your own servers. You just write your functions, deploy them, and that's it. So with Cloud Functions for Firebase, you also don't have to worry about scaling. We'll automatically spin up new instances whenever you need them, and also scale back down to zero once they're done. That way, you only pay for what you use. So earlier, Lauren mentioned Augur Labs, one of our partners that uses machine learning to build apps for art communities and galleries. They, used, they enjoyed using Cloud Functions because they only had to focus on writing the functions, and that's it. So let's quickly dive in and see exactly how it works. So Cloud Functions are event-driven. That means your functions listen for an event. And once that event is emitted, your function gets triggered, which executes the code in your function. So what kind of events do we support? So right now, there's support for Google Analytics for Firebase, the Firebase Real-Time Database, Cloud Storage for Firebase, Cloud PubSub, Firebase Authentication, and even HTTP requests for, inter <coughs> for integrating with third parties. So let's see how this looks with a real use case. So say we have an app that allows users to upload videos to Cloud Storage. So video upload will trigger a function that listens for a particular change on a bucket. Within that function, you can analyze the video using the Video Intelligence API, take those results, then store them into the real-time database. So let's quickly take a look at some code. So this is actually a real example that we're using in our app. So after a user account is created, we want to set their default language to English. So this is super simple for us to accomplish using Cloud Functions for Firebase. So here we're creating a function that listens for the user on create events from Firebase Auth. First, we grab the user's ID from the event payload. And finally, we set the user's default language to English in the real-time database using Firebase Admin. And that's it. You can also rely on multiple cloud functions to create specific workflows. For instance, we have a workflow here that's comprised of two separate functions. So an audio file is uploaded to cloud storage, which triggers a function. This function analyzes the audio and transcribes it using the Cloud Speech API. This then gets written to the database, which triggers another function. That function that was listening for the write in the database will run that text through the Cloud Translation API, which will then save the result back to the database. Also, as I mentioned, you want to try and keep secure, trusted code off the client, since there are ways to inspect the client code. We use Cloud Functions to handle all of our scoring logic. So when someone submits an answer, that gets written to our database, which then triggers a Cloud Function that contains all of our scoring logic. And depending on whether or not the answer is right, we'll update the user's score. So and with that, I'm going to hand it over to RJ, who's going to be diving into our code. Thank you, Brendan. So we thought that before we let you all play the game, we show you some of the, the back-end code, the Cloud Functions code that powers it all. Uh, we won't be showing you all of it, but what we want to show you is two parts that we think are most interesting. 
uh, we'll show you the part that does the judging of the guesses that you have. So if you type in a guess, there's some custom scoring logic that we do on the back end. And, uh, but we'll actually start by showing you the code that does speech analysis. Now, if we can switch over to the demo computer, please. Um, the code that we're looking at is Node.js. This is server-side code as if you were to run it on your own server, except it runs on ours. And uh, what you see is this looks, if you've, uh, if you've written in Node before, this might look familiar. We import two main dependencies. One of them is our functions module, and the other is a helper module that contains my actual logic. We'll get to that in just a second. What you see next is the set defaults function that Brendan was talking about before. I folded the actual code, but the structure is exactly as you've seen it on a slide. The, um, the cool thing, one of my favorite features about uh, Cloud Functions for Firebase, is that when you deploy your code, the Firebase command line tool will actually read your code, and it will see that, for example, in this case, set defaults is an authentication function that runs when uh, a user gets created, and it'll install the function for you without any further configuration on your part. It sees this from the code structure. Similarly, if we scroll down a little bit here to the analyze speech function, uh, which is the one that I'm going to show you all of the code for, you can see that this is a cloud function uh, that, has, uh, that acts on a storage trigger. When a storage object changes, for example, we upload a new storage object, uh, we get an event. And this event triggers this function over here. So the first thing I do, this is a little bit of just housekeeping, basically. When a function triggers, you might have triggered it accidentally. For example, let's say that I'm cleaning up my storage buckets. So what I'm doing first is, oh, if I triggered it accidentally, if this is not actually the event that I wanted to get, I skipped this one. Uh, but let's say that, uh, as is usually the case, I'm actually getting an event that I'm interested in. I will pull out two pieces of information from the event that I got, in this case, the URL of the file that was uploaded, a publicly available URL, as well as the file name of the object that was uploaded. And then I hand it off to this other module that I have, my, my own custom, you might call it business logic module. So why am I using a separate module? The reason for that is because I care about unit testing. And by factoring out my business logic into a separate module, I can write unit tests for exactly that module and just treat this, uh, this function as the entry point into my module. Now, if this is something you're interested in, uh, we won't go into depth on it in this talk. But at 2.30, me and two other colleagues will be talking about that more here in a session called Cloud Functions Testability and Open Source. So if you're interested in it, come back then. For now, we'll just dive into my business logic which is over here. So this is the actual logic of the function that does speech analysis. And um, the first thing we do is we parse the file name that I passed in to get some useful information, like the user ID, the language that the user was speaking when they were, um, when they were speaking to their phone, uh, the timestamp of the speaking, and then we formulate a request that we will send to the Cloud Speech API. Now, this is actually deceptively easy. When I started using the Cloud Speech API, I was expecting to have to do a lot of work. But these, this is six lines of code to do the entire call to the Cloud Speech API, which is pretty cool. Um, there's a fun thing here, by the way, uh, that I'm using. You, if you've worked in JavaScript before, you may be looking at this await keyword at the speech.recognize line. Let me pull it up a little bit so that people in the back can see it as well. Here we go. So this recognize operation, you would intuitively assume, and you would be correct, 
that this is a somewhat longer running operation. It might take a second. And in JavaScript, that means it's usually an asynchronous operation. But I like writing my code in a more like, synchronous reading flow, even though it is asynchronous code. And so I'm using the new await keyword to block on that line of code until it finishes. And then I'll just move on to the next. This is basically a more fluid way of writing promises if you've used JavaScript before. If you've never used JavaScript, or in this case, actually TypeScript before, then don't worry. This is actually just code that executes top to, bo uh, top to bottom. So yay. All right, so we have asked the Cloud Speech API to recognize an uh, audio uh, segment. And it turns that into a transcription, which we match with the current scene that we're in. Uh, the scene is something stored in our database. We skip over it. If you accidentally press the button, it didn't actually save any, um, uh, didn't say anything to your phone. Just press the button by accident. We skip over that. And then um, the next thing we do is the transcription will be a full sentence that you spoke to your phone. So if you said beach, uh, sand, then what we get from the Cloud Speech API is beach, uh, sand. And we want to be generous to you. We want to give you all of these guesses. So we'll split it into individual words so that you get the guesses beach, uh, and sand. And with that, we write that back to our database as a guess. So in just a few lines of code, I've done something that I, at least, didn't know how to do two years ago. Uh, two years ago, I would not have known how to analyze a, an audio file for speech in any number of languages. Um, and here it was in a few lines of code. So that's pretty cool. Let <laughs> Why, thank you. So I wanted to show you one more part, which is the uh, function that judges the guesses that we make. So in this function, this is, again, my index file. So this is my entry point. Uh, this function is a database function. And it triggers when we write to a certain path in the database. The, um, on that right, I get an event that just like with the speech event, I will skip if it's an event that I'm not that interested in. Uh, but in the vast majority of cases, I am interested, and I will move on to extracting a few important pieces of information. And then I call my business logic again. So very similar to what we saw before, um, even though it's a completely different type of event triggering this function, the logic is very much the same. And that takes us to the business logic here. Uh, judging our noun uh, starts with filtering out any pranksters and then getting some information from the database again, in this case, the language that the user was speaking, and the original English translation of the word that you said. Now, if the guess did not have an English translation for us already in the database, then it was incorrect. But if it did have a translation, then it was correct. So we know whether you had a correct guess or not. We give you a score based on that. And then we do a number of operations to write that score back to multiple places in the database. So why are we doing this server side? Because all of this logic, you could have done client side as well, right? Well, the reason is we don't trust you. We know that you have laptops. We know you can pull them out. And we know that you can edit the code that runs client side. You cannot edit this code. We determine whether your guess is correct or not, not you, which we like. So with that, I will hand it back to Lauren, uh, who is going to uh, play the game with us. Can we yeah. switch back to the slides? Uh, actually, sorry, stay, yeah, stay on the slide. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, no, sorry, stay on the slide. You oh, stay on the slides, yes. <laughs> sorry, I misheard you. Thank you. Um, if we can go to, I can control this, actually. The next slide. All right, so you've all been anxious to play. Some of you have already gotten practice, so I expect very high scores this time. Say that.io. So if you're streaming in remotely, wherever you are in the world, you can also play this game with us by going on this exact URL. You will be prompted to sign in first. 
So you can do a Google account, a GitHub account, um, or an email password combination. Great. And then um, some browsers will also have a pop-up that asks you for permission to access your microphone. So if you would like to be speaking to your phone during this game, uh, please grant it access. You can also play on your laptop if you don't have, well, I guess if you don't have a phone available, you have other concerns. But uh, you can also play on a laptop. Great. So if you can switch back to the demo computer, please. Okay, so we are going to be playing a new scene, Space. Are you all ready? All right. Okay, let the guessing begin. Uh, we only have two languages so far, so I need you guys to up the language game. If you speak another language, tap that English button on the top left corner, switch over to something else that you know. Five, that's pretty good. I think we can do better, though. All right. Wow, you guys are doing great. <laughs> OK, let's see what the result is. Oh, nice. You guys have managed to guess all of the possible answers. So that was galaxy, nebula, space, star, universe, and you managed to do it in a bunch of languages. Okay. I think some people might be confused about what scene we're on. Okay, now we're good. Nice, we got way more languages this time. Great job. Okay, so what the API saw from this video was animal, carnivore, which some of you guessed right. That's really impressive. <laughs> I did not see a carnivore when I was looking at this cute puppy. Dog, pet, and the actual breed of the dog, which was terrier. So that's pretty cool. And, and one of you has really great dog breed knowledge. Eleven languages, very nice. <laughs> awesome. Okay, let's see. So this one was bamboo, forest, nature, tree, and vegetation, which unfortunately nobody got right, but I guess the API saw vegetation from this scene. Great. Can we switch back to the slides, please? Awesome. So in conclusion, I hope we've managed to convince you that adding machine learning will greatly improve your app's user experience. And you can do it easily with Cloud Functions for Firebase. So Cloud Functions allows you to scale from zero to planet scale. It is great for resource-intensive tasks that otherwise would be too, uh, would slow down your client, would be too intensive for your client to do. It offers a trusted environment for your code, so you can keep your business logic and the secret sauce of your app within it. And with Cloud Function, oh, sorry, with Google Cloud's machine learning APIs, you don't need a PhD to be able to offer things like multi-language support and other machine learning experiences for a more contextual and intuitive feel to your app. We use the top three from the slide in our demo today, but we have other machine learning APIs available to you, such as the Natural Language API and the Vision API. And I encourage, that you, I encourage you to check them out as well. So thank you very much for being here with us this morning. If you want the source code of the app that we just played, you can find it at saythat.io slash source. Uh, the three of us will all be at the Firebase Sandbox right after this talk, so you can come ask your questions then. 
You can also tweet at, tweet at us with the hashtag io17-functions-ml to let us know what you thought about our talk today. Thank you very much.